Algebra 2, 3.9c, composite of two functions. So we're going to be doing a composite of two functions, like the function of g of x, okay? If you haven't seen the previous two videos, 3.9a or 3.9b, you can just click on this video's description to watch those so you don't get confused, all right? Functions can be combined in many ways. One way is called composition. Here's the definition of composition. If we let f and g be any two functions such that the range of g is the domain of f, the composition of f and g is the function given by the function of g of x. So it's read as the function of g of x, okay? Now remember, we can replace one variable with an entire algebraic expression. If we know that y is equal to 4 plus 2, then 3y equals 3 times 4 plus 2, right? So keep that in mind. So I want to also remind you again, and uh, some of you may be getting tired of this, but others may appreciate it. We have different names for the x and y values. The x can be the domain or the input. It's the x-coordinate. It's that first member in an ordered pair relation. And it's also called an abscissa. And the y values are the range, the output, the y-coordinate, it's also called the function of x, and it's the second member in an ordered pair relation, and it's also called an ordinate, okay? Maybe if I say it so many times, everyone will have that memorized. All right, so if the function of x equals x squared and g of x equals x plus 2, well, we can find the function of g of 3. The first thing we do is find the g of 3. So the g of 3 is going to equal 3 plus 2 because x is going to be uh, substituted by that number 3, isn't it? So that means g of 3 is going to be a 5. Well, if g of 3 is a 5, we can plug it in here for this inside the parentheses. So we have the function of 5. Now we substitute this 5 for that g of 3, see? And because this is x squared, we can substitute 5 for the x and have 5 squared, right? That's going to give us 25. So we found the function of g of 3 as 25. See? Substitution. Now we can find compositions of functions by working within inner parentheses first. So remember, we've got the function of x is x squared and the g of x is x plus 2, okay? I just copied it from up here so we could have it down here in the screen, all right? So now we're just going to do it and work inner parentheses first. So we're going to do function of 3 here first to find the function of g of f of 3, see? So now we have g of f of x and g is going to be x squared, isn't it? Because if we have this, we can substitute the x squared for the f of x, right? Because f of x is x squared, see? So we just substitute that in for f of x. Now we've got g of f of 3 equals, so this is going to equal... 3 squared, because we're substituting that 3 in for the x, see? It said f of x equals x squared. Well, if the x is a 3, then we have 3 squared. So that's going to be 9. And remember, g is x plus 2. g of x is x plus 2. So now we just take that 9, and, and the 9 is the x, isn't it? And we add 2 to it, and we get 11. We substitute the 9 for the x in the g of x equals x plus 2. See? I know it sounds confusing, but if you follow it step by step, you'll see how the substitution just went in place of these values, and we found that amount, okay? All right. Now, we can find expressions that represent the composite of two functions. So if f of x equals 4x and g of x equals x plus 3, we're going to substitute these values in for f of x and these values in for g of x, okay? So 
we've got f of g of x is going to equal f times x plus 3. See? If g of x is x plus 3, that means we can take these out and put the x plus 3 in its place. We just substitute it in. And if f of x is 4x, if the function is a 4, then we can just put the 4 here for the f, can't we? See? It just says f. It doesn't say f of x. So the f is x plus 3. Now we have 4x plus 3. That gives us 4x plus 12. See? Distributive property. We can take this information and find an expression for g of f of x. So now we've got the f of x inside of here. So that means we're going to have 4x inside of here, aren't we? So it's going to be g with the 4x inside the parentheses. We substitute that 4x for the f of x, see? And we know that g is x plus 3, so that means we have 4x plus 3, see? See how we did that? So remember, the domain of a function is its input values. It's the values we're putting into the function, and the range is the output values. It's what's coming out of the function, okay? Think of the function as just a little math machine, and when you put values into it, it's going to have stuff come out of it, okay? And that's the range in the output. Now, our next video is 3.9D, and we're going to talk about sine function, which is signum function. Signum is the Latin word for sine, and you might see it just as SGN, like this. Now, I'm not talking about S-I-N-E kind of sine. I'm not talking about that. This is different. This is sine function, signum function, okay? And I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist today, and you can use that to catch up or study for tests. And that's going to be in the description of this video. You can just click on these links, and there's going to be links to the Chapter 7 and Chapter 12 playlists from Algebra 1 and there's going to be a link to the Grade 8 Math Chapter 9 on transformations because we talked about that in the last couple of videos. All you have to do is click on this description and you can click right onto those links, okay? All right, so let's talk about signum function next. I hope you're having a great day. Keep your chin up, keep trying, and you'll be a math wizard. I'll see you next video. Bye.